Hi, I'm Scott Heisler. I've been a watchmaker for over 40 years. Uh, with my customers, uh, they trusted me so much to repair their watches, they asked me to get them a new watch. After they were asking me so many times for watches, I started Orlando Watch Company about 25 years ago. Should a watch collector own a watch winder? Is it a necessary tool? Watch winders are a convenience box. So you have a annual calendar or a perpetual calendar watch. It's awesome to have a winder box. You don't have to keep setting because it's very complicated to reset those watches. Uh, so it is very convenient for that. On the other hand, if you have multiple watches and you're going day to day, you're using a different watch. Maybe you have five watches for the week. You want the watches to be on time and the correct date. It's awesome to have those because it keeps them running. Is it going to keep the oil flowing? No. Uh, with the modern technology that we have and the modern synthetic oils, these watches will last. You know, some watches have a 10 year warranty on them, so they'll run 10 years with that oil that's in there. So it's not going to keep it lubricated. Are in house calibers important? I think most of the time, in house calibers are good for collectors. You know, there's a lot of hype in the watch industry. This is an in house caliber. Well, who's making your in house caliber? Is another company producing your? proprietary movement for your in-house caliber? Is that really your watch? Is that your factory building that watch? So there's a lot of pokey things that go around in Switzerland. It's being pulled out right now with a lot of investigators in the watch industry. What is a factory really telling you? What is the truth of that? But I think important watches in the watch industry, uh, when they have an in-house caliber and they're producing that in-house caliber, I think that's really important for the collector. It gives the watch value. What do you think about microbrands? Microbrands? I think uh, it's fantastic for the watch industry. We have these uh, young, up and coming watch makers, watch enthusiasts that have a concept in their head. Uh, it's easy to get movements out of Switzerland, Japan, China that they're putting into their design cases and design faces and what is the functions of the watch. I think that keeps the watch industry on their toes. I think it takes uh, that young collector that they can get into the industry affordable. Uh, they can put different straps on them. They can have a different type of watch every day if they wanted to with the micro brand. So I think, uh, I think it's really good for the industry. What is your favorite watch you have or would like to add? You know, for a collector, for a watchmaker, and for a watchmaker that's been in the industry for 40 years, uh, and that has worked on just about everything that you can uh, imagine, uh, my next watch is my favorite watch. My favorite watch today is the watch that I have on, but it could be this one this afternoon. So a watch junkie is a watch junkie. So. That's a very, very difficult question to, to answer. Roughly how many years should you stop swimming with a watch due to the diminishing integrity of the seals? Well, if you're a good watch owner, uh, your lifetime and maybe your grandson or granddaughter's lifetime, if you maintain that watch, the way that these watches are designed, uh, they'll last forever. If you don't destroy it, you maintain, then it, a watch will last forever. Every five or six years, depends on what the factory tells you. Uh, we have new watches that have five year, 10 year warranties. Uh, you, you do what the factory says. If you maintain it, lifetime. Do you think German watchmaking will exceed the Swiss? I don't think so. Exceeding it in volume, uh, produced watches, absolutely not. I think their quality is equal to the Swiss watch industry, but Switzerland is has built their country on watchmaking. So you have uh, dozens and dozens of towns that are producing parts, gaskets, you name it, for the watch industry. Germany, I don't think will ever have that. So it'll stay probably just in Glashütte. What do you think about Japanese watchmaking? I think the Japanese have, uh, have a great foothold on the watchmaking industry. I think that they have been put off for so many years 
oh, it's just a Seiko, it's only a Citizen, it's only a Casio, but these brands are here forever. Uh, when you go into the higher end portion of Grand Seiko, uh, they rival the technology. They are first in a lot of the horological uh, watches that we have today, the technology. So they're not going anyplace. I think they'll just get stronger. What is the most complicated complication to work on? The, the most complicated is in the watch repair business is the, the more items that you put on a watch, a tourbillon, perpetual calendar, an, annual calendar, repeating function, uh, those are the watches and when you get a little bit thinner, uh, thinness is what makes it very difficult to, to repair. So when you multiply all those different items in one watch, uh, the tourbillon cage that's on there, that adds a different complexity to it. But all those put together, that's, and when you get really, really, really thin, that's the most difficult. What is the first movement you worked on? First movement that I worked on was probably a pin lever. These are very expen inexpensive watches. Uh, they're not meant to be really repaired. It's like a Timex, it's a, just a generic type of, and I was a, a young boy when I first took my first one apart, did not put it back together because uh, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was fascinated at that point. It didn't work, I wanted to fix it, I did not fix it. <laughs> For someone who wants to be a watchmaker, what advice can you give? Practice, practice, practice. Go to school. When you get out of school, you know just the basics. So the more time sitting at a bench uh, is going to get you better and better and better. And if you have a support system, which today with the American Watchmakers Institute, uh, and when you go back to the school asking questions from your instructors, that's the way to do it. But it is time at the bench. Thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any other questions for me, I'll be answering them. So just add them into the comments and we'll get back to you. So now if you wanna take these parts and if you wanna build a watch, we have a build a watch program. We are member, I am a member of the American Watchmakers Institute, a lifetime member. And we have a van that comes in with eight watchmakers benches with a watch instructor and you're gonna build your own watch. You're gonna oil your own watch. You're gonna put the hands, the dials, waterproof it, the whole works. It's November 12th, 13th and 14th. When you finish your watch, you're gonna take it home. You can build any case that you want, any straps that you want contact Orlando Watch Company, go to our website, and we'll give you all the details.